Well, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, my name is John Osborne, and I'm the OpenShift lead for the Red Hat Federal team. In the next uh, five minutes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it takes to run Kubernetes in the federal government. If I can change the slide. There we go. So there's lots of work being done in the Kubernetes community to make Kubernetes easier. So there's great work being done with KubeADM, Kubernetes Operators, Federation. But we all know that running Kubernetes and things in general, just making them easier, it's not just a technical problem, right? There's lots more than just the technical bits and bytes. And in the federal government, we actually have laws that define what it takes to put codes and code in production. And since 2002, we've had this law called the Federal Information Security Management Act, or FISMA. And it defines basically this large risk management framework that all code needs to go through before it can process federal data, before it can go into production. And it doesn't matter if you're the Center for Disease Control or the IRS or the Department of Agriculture or even the US Army or the US Navy. Everyone needs to go through this framework. And I'll spare you all the details of it, but it often includes all these outputs that might include a spreadsheet that's thousands of lines or Word documents that are hundreds of pages. And lots of technical knobs that need to be turned too. So things like disabling weak encryption ciphers or making sure that data is written to a, a specific disk, uh, making sure that you have two-way TLS, things like that. Now this whole process is called the ATO process. If you check all these boxes at the very end, uh, someone will give you what's called an authority to operate or an ATO. And that's what you need to run Kubernetes in the federal government, an ATO. Now this process is very time consuming and expensive. So, uh, typically, this whole process takes about six to 18 months. And the government's estimated to Congress that this usually costs them about 10%, a little bit under 10% of their whole IT budget. So for 2019, which is the government's current fiscal year, the government's IT budget was $83 billion. $83 billion. All these agencies on here spent over a billion dollars on IT. So we can estimate that this whole ATO process to get systems approved cost about $8 billion, but probably a little bit more than that because that actually doesn't include uh, agencies like the CIA and NSA and all the intelligence agencies, which actually, their budgets are classified, so we actually don't even know the true number. But cost actually isn't the only problem. You know, if it just took you 8,000 people hours and a year and a half of your life to get a system accredited, would you update a component if you then had to update that paperwork? Probably not, right? So that's how we get things like Tomcat 5.5 and Postgres 8.1 uh, still processing lots of uh, workloads in the federal government. Now you can imagine those, those components are straightforward to, are pretty simple components, right? Compared to something like Kubernetes, which is gonna touch all of your storage and all of your uh, networking and your hosts and all your apps and containers. So you know, pretty much a non-starter. And we think we can do a lot better. So in 2014, uh, the Obama administration created this cool startup called 18F, and it's basically um, a startup within the federal government that tried to bring, or is bringing, uh, lean startup methodologies and, and open source to the federal government. Um, and what they quickly realized was this whole ATO process is the biggest barrier to innovation in the government right now. And so they created this compliance as code project, or an effort in general, which uh, part of it standardizes a format to generate these thousands of lines of spreadsheets and all these hundreds of page Word documents and so forth. And Red Hat's been really focused in this area around Kubernetes, but we're not the only vendor that's doing a lot of work in this area. So uh, Amazon and, and Microsoft has been working for AWS and Azure. Uh, Pivotal's done work with Cloud Foundry. Uh, Docker has done work for the Docker engine and so forth. Um, but we, th we thought at Red Hat, wouldn't it be nice if you could actually uh, not only automatically generate all this paperwork that's taking thousands of people hours to generate, but also an automated tool that you could use to turn those knobs to disable those weak ciphers and make sure things are written to a separate disk. Well, that's really what the ATO Pathways project is all about. Um, we've done a lot of work so far on it, uh, but we still have, uh, it is still a work in, project, pro uh, work in progress, so there's lots of work left to be done. So that's it, I'm ending 30 seconds early. I do wanna say a special thanks to the ATO Pathways lead, which is Sean Wells. Um, if you wanna see the work we've done so far, you can go to this bit.ly link, uh, bit.ly slash Kubernetes ATO. And again, our goal is to make Kubernetes easy, not just the, the bits and bytes, but all the, the other pieces around it as well. So thank you very much for your time.